Hey, what's up guys and gals? It's the Tyrant here. Happy Saturday to you and welcome back to my weekly Q&A session where you guys ask the questions and I give you the answers. It's always my favorite time of the week. You guys are such a great crowd. I always love having these candid conversations with you. I want to thank each and every one of you for being here. And speaking of thanking, I want to thank Luke in Gold. He is our newest Patreon member, the latest patron to join the premium ranks here at MythicTower.com. I want to thank you so much, Luke. It's always good to have you here and it's great to have you among our ranks in the premium community. And speaking of Patreon, don't worry, I'm not going to dog you about this one today, but uh, I just want to address something real quick uh, because we've had a lot of uh, questions about this. So for those of you who don't know, there are different uh, ranks that you can join in the Patreon uh, site, and uh, one of them is Team Tyrant. And of course, if you're in the Team Tyrant ranks, uh, we have a special Discord thread for you within the Discord, so basically a sub-thread. And the reason for this is because with Team Tyrant members, I have community game nights. We had one not too long ago, and I'm planning the next one probably in the next few weeks, uh, two to three weeks. I'm not really entirely sure yet. Obviously, I don't want to have one uh, next week because it's Thanksgiving, and a lot of people are going to be spending time with family. Some people may be out of town. And uh, so generally speaking, when a new uh, date is set, I will put it in that particular thread. Uh, and if I don't have your gamer tag yet, generally speaking, when it's close to the time of the uh, community game night, I'll go ahead and, and grab that up and that way we can uh, have a lot of fun together. So I'm really looking forward to it. And so thank you for the folks who are donating to the uh, Patreon site. It's really helping me out in this YouTube crisis thing. Uh, if you want to become a member yourself, I'll go ahead and throw a link up there real quick. Uh, you get a lot of nice benefits from it and you'll definitely help uh, the site out going into the future. So thank you. Uh, one other thing I want to bring up before the Q&A, uh, this involves my Twitter feed. So th this isn't me like lecturing or anything like that, but I I've noticed recently that I've been looped into a lot of uh, uh, conversations and some of these conversations go on for a while. I, I want to say that I certainly don't mind being looped in when someone's trying to show me something or trying to get my opinion on something uh, that they've done. Maybe it's a piece of work, uh, artwork that they've created or a video they've created because I'm certainly always eager to check out the artistic abilities of the folks in my community because I know that we have a lot of talent here and I love watching all the stuff that you do and the stuff that you produce. To that end though, uh, when, when those uh, tweets blossom into full-blown conversations or Twitter storms, then it ends up flooding my Twitter feed and it ends up, so I'll just again, give you an example. I logged into my Twitter just a couple of days ago and I saw that I had like 70 new notifications and I'm like, whoa, what did I miss? And apparently it wasn't much of anything. It wasn't really Halo related. I think it was, I, I don't even remember at this point, but uh, the, the, the main problem with that, of course, I wasn't getting involved in it at all. Uh, it didn't have anything to do with me either. So the, the thing of it is when that type of thing happens, People who are sending me tweets, especially when they're sending me questions for the Q&A, sort of get lost in the mix. So if you see that I'm not responding in the conversation after a few tweets, uh, I would say just kind of when you respond to the other people, if you could just take my uh, name out of it. Uh, again, I, I want to uh, see your artwork and everything, but to be included in those giant conversations uh, means that I miss out on other things. So again, you know, don't take it as me yelling at you or trying to discipline anybody. Uh, it's, it's an honest mistake. And so if you could going into the future, just be a little bit more careful with that. And speaking of Twitter, if, you, if you're uh, curious about the submitting questions to the Q&A, for those of you who don't know how this works, it's pretty simple. First of all, uh, you can submit your question in the comment section below of this week's video to be considered for next week. Or you can hit me up on Twitter at Mythic Tyrant. Uh, usually each week I pick uh, 10 questions, give or take a few. I actually picked 12 this week because we had a lot of good ones. Um, also, if you're a premium member with Patreon, uh, or at least my Patreon, I should say, then you can ask in the Discord as well, and I'll, and I'll be happy to put that up there. So that's all there is to it. Let's go ahead and dive right in. Our first question of the week comes from Jonathan Skin. I want to apologize for a second because I actually spelled his name wrong last week. I hope I got it right this time, Jonathan. And Jonathan asks, when doing a full Halo franchise run, should people do it in chronological order, release order, or a custom order? So in, uh, just from what I've seen, typically people do it in chronological order. I can see why this would be a little bit jarring for people watching simply because if you're starting with Halo Reach, 
assuming you're not doing the uh, extra games like Halo Wars and Halo Spartan Assault. If you start with Reach and then you go to Halo Combat Evolved, there's a huge graphical difference unless you're doing Anniversary and then you're doing Halo 2 Anniversary. And then when you get to Halo 3, again, you start getting a little bit down in the graphics. Personally though, but not as much as between Halo Reach and standard Halo Combat Evolved. So if I were to do it personally, I would say do it in chronological order. But I appreciate you asking, Jonathan. I hope I got your name right this time, buddy. Our next question comes from Johan Svensson. And Johan asks, question for next week, what about the Halo 5 campaign do you actually think was so terrible other than them just skipping a lot between 4 and 5? I thought the story was more interesting than 4 for the, for the most part, to be honest. Well, to each their own, Johan. I, I would say th there were a lot of things. First of all, to me, it seemed like a jumbled up mess. There was a lot of things happening that just didn't add up. They seemed to be just rushing things too much. What it comes down to is I think the story was a lot... They made it a lot bigger, or they wanted it to be a lot bigger than it was. They were trying to make it too big. They were trying to fit too much into one game. Halo 3 has a very similar problem. And I know you guys already know that I love Halo 3. It's my favorite Halo game. Uh, but it's mostly because of the gameplay and the features. It has nothing to do with the actual story. I thought the story was kind of meh, uh, mainly because I thought the character, not only because it was so jumpy in terms of like once you leave Earth and you're on the Ark, then you're on High Charity, then you're on the Halo Ring in such a short amount of time, but all the characters were so different from everything else in the franchise. They all felt like cartoon caricatures of their former selves, like Miranda Keys. Someone's asking her, where should we send the troops? And she's like, to war. And I'm like, really? You're supposed to be a captain, damn it. And then you have, or I'm sorry, a commander. And then you've got, you know, Truth all of a sudden. He went from being like a very intelligent intellectual to just being a raving lunatic. And then even Guilty Spark wasn't acting like an automaton like he was in the previous two games. He was just kind of raging out in certain times. It was weird. But anyway, back to Halo 5. With Halo 5, first of all, it, again, you were jumping all over the place without any context. The story just didn't have any context to it. And, and so when you keep jumping from planet to planet, it's just like, okay, well, that wasn't really important. Why do we do that? And worst of all, you're doing it with people you don't really care about. You know, when you, when you look at, you know, Spartan Locke and you look at the rest of Fireteam Osiris with maybe the exception of Buck, you don't know anything about these people. You're not told why you should, you're, you're not shown why you should care about these people. You're just told, boom, there they are in your face. It was just very sloppy storytelling. And of course, there was no real main antagonist. It wasn't the Warden Eternal. You can argue that it was Cortana, but even then we didn't really know that till the end of the game. So, and it all felt like just one act. It didn't feel like a solid three act story like Halo 2. You know, I know I criticize Halo 2 a lot, but if I give it credit for one thing, it's that by itself it had a really strong narrative and it was, it's an enjoyable story to actually watch. Now, I still like Halo 5 for its gameplay mechanics, which I'll get into later. Uh, there's a different question on here asking it. Uh, but yeah, the story just, it, it was very off from anything else I'd ever seen in another Halo game. So I hope that answers your question, Johan, and thank you. Our next question comes from Mudskip454. I always love hearing from this guy. And he asks, do you think puppies are more cute than cats? If you say cats, don't worry, I know a doctor. Well, I appreciate the sentiment, Mudkip. Uh, well, here's the truth. I love cats and dogs equally. I'm an animal lover. I love all sorts, you know, I, I, I've had, uh, let's see, I, you know, I mostly have cats. Well, I only have cats and it's because I'm not allergic to them or at least not as much. Dogs, I am deathly allergic to. I love dogs, but I've been hospitalized twice in my adult life because I was around dogs too much. But I love all animals. I, I've had lizards, I've had turtles, I've had frogs. You know, it's, I, I love animals, period. So, you know, I, I can't really make a choice between the two. You know, if, if I see an animal, you know, it's, oh, it just makes my day. What can I say? So all animals would be the, would be the answer there, Mudkip. And I hope that answers your question. Thank you. Our next question comes from Luke Skywalker II. And Luke asks, for next week's Q&A, do you think that Halo 5's false marketing could have actually been alluding to something bigger than Halo 5 itself, like something in Halo 6? No, no, I, I just think they started out with one idea and went in a different direction. That's, that's pretty much all there is to it. I think it was just, uh, I, I don't know if it was sloppiness or laziness. I just, I think they started out with an idea similar to Halo 2 and they just ended up doing something different with it. So yeah, that's it, Luke. But thanks, I appreciate it. 
Our next question comes, uh, next question comes from Stacking Benjis. And Benjis asks, I've asked this, I've asked it before and I'll ask it a third and final time. Sorry, Stacking, in case you missed it before. Do you think it's possible for Chief to become a Cortana-like AI for someone else who will take his place as the main fighting character? He, actually, he asked a very interesting question. I brought this up before of what may be the ultimate fate of Master Chief. And because we've had the concept of the composer in the storyline, and we know that the didact was composed, and some people theorize that maybe his composed version, maybe this is an advanced composer uh, that, we're, that we never knew about up until Halo Escalation, uh, maybe that the didact is having some sort of influence over Cortana. And so I theorize that it's entirely possible, since in Halo 4 they sort of alluded her, to her having like a physical form, that maybe Master Chief ends up saving Cortana and then in the process he becomes digitized from the composer and she actually ends up being the first being to go from being digital to being actual carbon based. And I think that would be kind of a cool thing. I think it's possible, it's a little far out, but considering some of the things that we've seen in the past couple of Halo games, I wouldn't put it past them. So thanks for bringing that up, Benjis. That was a great question. I'm sorry it took me so long to get to it. Our next question comes from Claude Assassin. And Claude asks, what do you think can fix vehicular combat? Because in Halo 5, the standards are now literally paper. To be honest with you, I think the standards in Halo 5 are better than they were in Halo 2. I mean, I remember when in Halo 2, I was on, uh, not Blood Gulch, whatever the successor is, Coagulation. I was able to melee a tank to death, and that just kind of felt off to me. You shouldn't be able to just beat a tank and have it blow up. Yeah, I think the vehicles in Halo 5 are a little weak and they could stand an upgrade, uh, but I think we've seen worse previously, so maybe they can just increase vehicular health if that helps. So hopefully that answers your question, Claude. Our next question comes from Shadow King. And Shadow King asks, remember Halo Online? Yeah, well, if it becomes a full game, do you think it should have a multiplayer campaign? Uh, I I'm not really sure what you mean by that. Do you mean like Titanfall multiplayer campaign? Or do you mean like should it have a campaign period? Because if so, technically it does. Halo 3's campaign, really Halo Online, is essentially, at least for the most part, Halo 3 maps. They have, I think they have one from Halo 2 that I'm aware of. But for the most part, it's as if Halo 3 multiplayer was something that you could play on the PC. Uh, for anything else, not really. It's not a, a canon game, so if they ever did it, I would say their best bet would just be to incorporate the Halo 3 campaign and make that available for PC. I know people have been wanting that for a while anyway, so yep, that's my answer, Shadow King, and thank you for stopping by. Our next question comes from Jackal Elite, and Jackal asks, do you think the drones will return in future Halo titles? Do you want them to return? I remember you said that you disliked how drones were first implemented in Halo 2, so if they do come back, how would you like to see them featured in, in the future gameplay? Okay, so uh, first of all, you're absolutely right. I hate the way the drones were implemented. They felt like they were not really a part of the Covenant. They were just something extra. They didn't fit in at all. Even worse than the Brutes, in my opinion. The thing of it is, the, when you mention... Uh, that, that there was one part where they were decently implemented. There, there was one segment in the mission Data Hive in Halo 3 ODST where I thought they were implemented very well. Um, and it was only one segment. It wasn't the Hive part. It was right after you meet Dare and you're, uh, you're descending through the facility and you're going through these long, dark corridors. The drones are actually fighting alongside the Covenant. It's not a big swarm of them. They're just a couple of them there. And sometimes they don't attach to the ceiling or attach to the uh, walls. And they sort of, you know, dodge around, sort of like jackals would, but they had aerial capabilities too. So they felt more, you know, integrated with the Covenant as opposed to the, just the massive swarms that we usually see. And so while that could work, when I had originally envisioned drones before I actually interacted them with Halo 2, I thought they'd be something similar to the Watchers that we see in Halo 4 and 5. Just an aerial support unit that would appear from time to time. Not massive shooting galleries worth of, of cannon fodder. So... If they were to return, I'd say do it something like that. But since we already have the Watchers, I can't see where they wouldn't be redundant. So I hope we don't see drones in future titles. I think that they were a waste of space. And that's my personal opinion. But still, that's, that's a great question, Jackal Elite. Thank you. And I love the name, by the way. Our next question comes from Brian Webb. And Brian asks, I'm hoping you can explain this to me. I'm always hearing other YouTubers complain about Sprint and 
uh, sorry, uh, complaining about sprint and the Halo 5 armor abilities. I personally like them and I don't understand the hatred. Sorry, the screen's like five feet in front of me. Is it because I don't do multiplayer and stick to campaign? I can't see seem to understand why people wouldn't want those abilities in the campaign. Is it just a multiplayer thing? So basically why is that, what he's asking is, uh, what's wrong with Sprint and the uh, Halo 5 movement system? Why do people dislike it so much? So to, to answer part of your question, I think a lot of it is multiplayer based just because it is very different. But when people are complaining about that is because they love the classic movement system so much from Halo Combat Evolved through Halo 3. And I understand that to a point. Uh, and to counter that 343, what they did was they made a Halo 3 playlist in multiplayer so you could play in that classic format. I think in the future when they come out with the next major Halo title they should do that on release day so people have the option to play with the new movement system or if it's still the Halo 5 one the Halo 5 movement system or to play the classic one so people have a choice. I don't think it's good to force one on the other though. Personally I'm with you I love the Halo 5 movement system I know I might be the odd man out for a lot of people but I think it's a way of them keeping up with the times. They still haven't gone to wall running yet, so keep your fingers crossed that they won't do that. Uh, let that s stick with Titanfall. They did a horrible job doing that with Call of Duty. But, you know, there's a lot of things that you can do with the movement system, and it allows for a lot of different things as well. Part of the reason we can have such larger maps, both horizontally and vertically, is because of these new movement systems. They give you a lot of options, especially when it comes to campaign. I don't really understand why people wouldn't want additional moves to be able to counter the enemies. Keep in mind, I think Halo 5's movement system is far better than 4 or Reach's because everyone has the same abilities all the time. No one has a direct advantage over somebody else because one person picked up cloaking while the other person picked up jetpack. I think the Halo 5 system is good. I hope that I see that in Halo 6, maybe some slight improvements to it. But for the most part, I like the way that it is now. Uh, in terms of multiplayer, the way they can correct that is do exactly what they did uh, recently, which is make a classic playlist for people to enjoy. So I hope that answers your question, Brian, and I certainly appreciate it. Our next question comes from the Storyteller channel. And Storyteller asks, what are some of the possible games that you would like to do a playthrough of other than Halo? I'd love to see you do a playthrough of Doom and Wolfenstein, the new Colossus. Maybe even go back to older titles. Play some Portal 2. Have a good one, Tyrant. Stay awesome. Thank you, Storyteller. So, funny thing, I actually have Doom videos on this site. Uh, and no one watches them. And it, it really pissed me off, too. In fact, you know, when I did my full campaign and cutscenes of Doom, I think the video got about a thousand views total, which is nothing. Because previously, whenever I'd done like a full campaign run of a video game, it would get hits in the hundreds of thousands. In fact, some of my most popular videos today remain to be full campaign and cutscene videos that I did five years ago. But for whatever reason, whenever I pick up another title, people, it's, it's a hit and miss, mostly miss. Uh, a couple of years ago, I did Star Wars Battlefront. Uh, about a year before that, I did Titanfall, or maybe two years before that. But, you know, people loved those. And then when I did uh, Doom this past year, or I think it was 2016, I'm sorry, wow, time flies. Uh, no one wanted to watch it, which is interesting because I did a video, another Doom video where it was just the introduction to the Baron of Hell, and that got like 50,000 views. But my full campaign and cutscene didn't. And so that kind of pissed me off a little bit. Then I did Gears of War 4, no one wanted to watch that. I did uh, Titanfall 2, and I was really surprised that no one seemed to take to that either since the first one did so well. And since you mentioned Portal, I've even done a full campaign and cutscenes version of Portal. And no one watched that. For older titles, I've done that too. I've done Box Adventure. I've done Super Mario Brothers, the original one. I've done the original Splatterhouse. Uh, but no one seems to want to watch them, and it's such a pain because there are so many other games I want to play, especially right now considering we're having kind of a slow time with Halo. Not a lot's you know, going to happen in the, in the near future. There's not a lot to report right now. All the, all the stuff that's getting upgraded to 4K, you know, I already talked about that. I don't really need to go into it anymore. Um, I don't need to do any more walkthroughs because I already have them up on the site. So aside from the mythic stuff that I'm doing right now, it's just kind of like, okay, what do I do next? And, you know, I just bought Star Wars Battlefront 2. Uh, I know the whole loot crate, you know, conspiracy type thing. You know, I, I side with the players on that one, but I bought the game for the campaign, not the multiplayer. So 
I, I would love to play more stuff, but I need the community to actually, you know, encourage it. They, they need to support it uh, in order for me to do it. Because I don't want to spend, like, like I did with Doom, where I spent, you know, a couple of weeks trying to put that video together, only for no one to watch it. So, like I said, it, it's great. I think, I, I hope, I love your suggestion. I hope people can support it. And when I, you know, post the next video, maybe it will be Star Wars Battlefront 2. I don't know. Uh, you know, make sure that you spread it around, make sure people see it and, you know, make sure people like it and comment on it. So hopefully that'll be the case. If I see an improvement in that area, I'll be happy to revisit that type of thing. So great question, Storyteller, and I appreciate it. Our next question comes from Karen Cunningham. And Karen asks, how would you feel about the Arbiter and the Master Chief fighting side by side against Atriox and Halo 6? I would love to see the Master Chief and the Arbiter fight side by side again. In fact, again, I might be the odd man out here, but I love the squad system in Halo 5. Uh, with the exception of having characters I was not familiar with, uh, if they bring it over to Halo 6, I would, since we already know it's going to be a Master Chief-centric story, I would love the Arbiter to be one of the other three guys, along with, I guess, Locke, because now he's sort of locked in <laughs> into the uh, franchise. And then, of course, I think Buck should be in there, too. So, yeah, I think that would be great. I'm not sure if Atriox should be the main villain, uh, but if he is, it would be an interesting contest for sure. So, great question, Karen. Thank you. And our final question of the week, our star question comes from my man, Pat Canny. And Pat asks, hey man, quick question. When you're making your guides, do you record your narration after the fact? Or do you narrate as you play since you know the level so well? So now it's time I let you in on my deepest, darkest secret. The answer is no! <laughs> okay, but seriously for a second. Uh, the answer is actually yes and no. Uh, I started out doing it that way, believe it or not. I actually did record at the same time that, or record the audio at the same time I was playing, and I'll tell you the history behind it. So, as you know, I started the, this whole thing, this whole Mythic Tyrant thing out by doing Mythic Difficulty, Legendary All Scrolls on walkthroughs uh, on halo.bungie.org. Now, back then, I didn't have a capture card or anything like that, and so what I would do is uh, the the main admin of the site, Louie Wu, uh, would ask me to record audio for certain parts of the mission so he can include it in the guide. Because again, back then, he didn't, we didn't post the full videos to the guide. It would just, it would be a couple of paragraphs and it'd have a snippet of what I did in the campaign, then another couple of paragraphs, and I would of course narrate them. And it was interesting because I was the first one to do that on that site. The, the guys who did it previously uh, put little clips, but they didn't actually do any narration for it. When I started doing my own YouTube channel back in 2010, the campaigns were still so fresh in my mind that I was able to go through the missions relatively easily, and so I could, just to save time, do the recording in the process. And I'll never forget this. This is probably something that most of you guys don't remember, but I did something called uh, the Halo Reach Laser Challenge. Uh, I think it was Tyrant's Halo Reach Laser Challenge, and essentially it was all skulls on on Legendary except for Blind, because back then, uh, blind wasn't required for the achievements. Uh, I guess Bungie heard everyone was, you know, crying and whining about it, so they, they uh, took blind off as a requirement. And I remember going through the missions, and for the most part, I was able to do it without too much of an issue. And then I got to Long Night of Solace, and I would start the uh, commentary out while I was playing, and I'd start with a whimsical joke or something like that, and then I'd get three quarters of the way through the mission, and they get my ass handed to me by an Elite Ultra. And it just made me so mad doing that over and over again, and, and so I, I still did it, okay? But then I got to Halo 4. Now, Legendary really didn't give me too much of a hard time, but when I got to Mythic, it was a different story. What you have to understand is Halo 4 was the first Halo game since 3 that didn't have campaign theater mode. So every time I got myself killed in that game, I had no idea what did it. I even spawned a series off of it called Halo 4 WTF Moments, which a lot of people really loved. And it was because I really had no clue how th certain things happened. And you can even see the turning point where I gave up on doing recording while I was playing the game. And it was during the second mission uh, when I was trying to despawn the enemies, I ended up jumping into a bottomless pit. And I actually saved that audio clip for uh, my Halo 4 WTFs moments uh, episode called Jump the Shark. And so it's, it's on here now if you want to uh, scroll back and take a look at it. But after that, I was like, okay, this is too much of a time waste at this point. I should really just do the gameplay first, and that way I can deliver better commentary afterwards. And the reason I say that is because when you're playing, 
uh, you start you you concentrate mostly on the game rather than what you're saying. So you may not always uh, add to the commentary critical elements that are needed to actually get through the certain uh, moments in the campaign. Take Halo Five for example. Right now. Uh, I'm working on the mythic guide for that, and I'm working more specifically on the mission evacuation. And the, the missions are so complex, and they have so many enemies, that it's just, it would be almost impossible for me to do commentary at the same time, while also including critical elements within that commentary to help you actually get through the mission. Uh, people tell me that they think Halo 5 is so easy where it's the easiest one because you have the squad system, uh-uh, it is not. Yes, the squad system does make things a little bit simpler for you, but the game balances that out by having higher quantities of enemies with stronger abilities, like being able to shoot you from across the map. Uh, so, and I even spawned my own Halo 5 Guardians WTF moments from that just because of all the ridiculous things that happen. Remember, in Halo 5, once again, we do not have theater mode. And 343, if you're listening, please fix that for the next major Halo title. But we don't have theater mode for campaign, so it's difficult to figure things out. Uh, especially in Halo 5 because it seems like kind of a grind because of the numbers of enemies. Uh, it just, I don't know what I would say for those long, drawn-out moments where I'm sitting behind, you know, a barrier trying to take out, you know, uh, two dozen different enemies. And, and so it's just, I, I don't think it's the best idea to do that anymore. It just, it, it, it's kind of a time waste. It doesn't benefit the people who are actually trying to utilize the walkthroughs. And, and it's just, it's harder to learn from my mistakes when I don't know what the mistakes are to begin with. And to be honest with you, looking back on it now, I think it was probably a modern miracle that I was able to pull that off back then, where I was able to actually concentrate on the game while also being able to somewhat focus on the commentary. But as the games have gotten more increasingly difficult, they've changed up a lot, it, it's not as straightforward as it used to be. It doesn't follow the same formula that I'm, that I'm used to. And so in order to adapt, I need to have my full concentration on the gameplay itself. So yeah, that is my, that is my deepest, darkest, mythic tyrant secret where I don't, it, at least not anymore, uh, do the commentary while I'm playing. In fact, uh, I even sort of mentioned this. I think it was in my Halo or my uh, Blue Team video for the Mythic Guide that I had already know, knew what was going on throughout the playthrough, uh, just to sort of get you guys caught up on it. So, uh, to sum up the question, it's something that I used to do, and as the game started getting more complex and had a lack of theater mode, it was something that I sort of put behind me and just sort of reorganized how I put my guides together. So that was a great question, Pat. I know it was a short one for you, but it was a long one for me, and I enjoyed it. So guys and gals, what do you guys think about it? Does it take any of the magic out now that you know that I don't actually record audio as I'm playing, at least not most of the time, even if I once did it? You can let me know in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter, at Mythic Tyrant. A link to my Twitter feed can be found in the description below. And if you like these videos, uh, and you want to support me, you want to help try to get this site going throughout 2018 and beyond. If you consider yourself a Mythic Tyrant fan, please check out my Patreon site to support us. It requires just as little as $1 a month. That's it. That's chump change. And, you know, if you're a real big Mythic Tyrant fan, you really want to show your community spirit, we have a Mythic Tyrant store as well. We have dozens of different items. I'm going to try to have a different sale on one every day, so you can check those out too. I'll post those on Twitter. But, yeah, the store is really cool. It's got dozens of different items all bearing the Mythic Tyrant logo. Uh, electronics, apparel, it's got a lot of cool stuff there, so definitely check it out. And if you like this video and you want to see more and you want to stay up to date on all your Halo news, tips, tricks, and secrets, don't forget to click that subscribe button for more great content every single day right here on MythicTower.com. And while you're at it, click that notification icon as well so you get push notifications every time a new available goes live, and you can be one of the first to see it and comment on it. Thanks so much, guys and gals, for watching. I hope everyone has a great weekend. I'll catch you all right back here next time. Have a very happy Thanksgiving, and as always, I'm the Tyrant, signing off.